I'm Sonia Morton Firth and you're watching the Sonia Morton Firth Show. Today my guest is the beautiful Veronique Brice. Veronique is a world-class professional bodybuilding athlete and at 53 has won seven competitions. She's also a single mum of three and a successful businesswoman who has built her own brand of bespoke bikinis, La Diva Design. Veronique, thank you so much You're for being welcome. on my show. That's lovely to see you again, Sonia. It's great to see yeah. you How again. How has it been? Do you know what? Well, I think when I first competed in, when I was 44, so four years ago, and you made my beautiful bikini. Oh my bikini. gosh, that was at the start of my company. That I was, was probably yeah. a couple of years into it. I, Amazing. And wow. it's grown so much. I remember so you much. very well. What, you color, remember? what color was it, though? It was gold, and I remember oh, it yes, so well. Because yes. I came up to you. I think I met you at an exhibition. And as soon as you body saw power? me, it was body power. Oh. And you said, I know the color for you. <laughs> and you just said, gold, this will be your bikini. Um, but Veronica, you've done amazing things. Tell me though, what, I mean, what got you into bodybuilding? How did it all start for you? Okay, I was a ballerina for quite a long time and I was, wow. put, yeah, so stage was for me something that I always wanted to be on. Were but you a uh, professional? Very, very low, no, because I stopped at 14. So I did seven years, but quite intense. Oh, I was wow, really yeah. intense about it. So it was not just like, oh, I go to ballet for an hour and then forget about it for a week. I was practicing all the time and I was going to two, two classes a week. Um, so ballet, you know, ballet, ballet was very big, but then I stopped uh, ballet for some family reasons and um, I got into fitness, like other ways of using my energy because I was always full of energy well, okay. as the day I was born. And, um, and I got into fitness, I started the aerobic classes mm. in the 80s, which oh, yes. was like, you know, I'm, I'm quite old. <laughs> yeah. when, when Jane Fonda was yeah. up, you know, I was doing all these classes and then I met my first um, serious boyfriend. He was American model from LA and he was a model in Paris, um, visiting Paris and I was working in his gym and he started to say, hey, come on, if you want to change your body, you've got to go in the gym and uh, in the weight and lift some weights. I was 19 years old, I said, oh, really? Yeah. That's not for women. We, we do the aerobic classes, yeah. you do the weights. He said, no way, because America was 10 years ahead of, yeah, of, of Europe of with yeah. that. So I started with him. I was 19 and I, I could see my body changing because he was pushing me, like, come on, one more, do And I was like, whoa, this is incredible. Yeah, because you, you start building proper muscles and I was just, I've always been and at focused 19, on, on my body. Yeah, always great. Yeah, but I wasn't hardcore, mm. but I was like, getting my body, you know, some biceps and, you know, legs and <laughs> it, I was much smaller than I am yeah. now. But yeah, this is, that was my first ever um, time I started bodybuilding and I never stopped since then. And you've never stopped, so you've been training since you were 19. Yeah, yeah, obviously I had pregnancies, but I was, even with pregnancies, I was going always training. I had tra uh, personal trainers and I uh, had three children and all through the pregnancies I was doing bodybuilding as well. But you know, bodybuilding is a big word. People think bodybuilding, oh my god, she's going to be Schwarzenegger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. No, we're not, yeah. No, bodybuilding yeah. is body sculpting. You're huh. sculpting your body. You're changing areas or you're toning up areas mm. you don't like. Doesn't mean you gotta make them bigger and bulkier and you can fit look, you know, I fit my shoes. You look fantastic, you look amazing. Um, but it's the way of defying gravity and make sure that you know nothing is gonna sag when you get older and you can still hold a bum and you and you're not afraid to get in a bikini mm. in front of everybody or naked in front of maybe you know your boyfriend, husband or whatever. You know, you, you you're confident naked. That's the that's probably what building gives you because you you're pushing your body so hard and you 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 know toning up everything so it's not saggy and yeah, that's, no, no, it's you know amazing. just keep it tight but you I, can but I guess in those days you were probably up against um, and probably less so now stick thin models yeah. that were all the rage yeah. you know it was very fashionable to be and like a very stick thin Things and look emaci emaciated. Yeah and really unhealthy women just not eating and uh, doing loads of cardio, not lifting weights because they didn't want to look bulky. No, but I mean, you know, Sonia, because you work out as well, how long does it take to get 
Uh, maybe a little oh, bump I on mean, your arm. it's like watching paint dry. For God's sake, uh, people are like, so no, 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 don't leave me, don't give me these weights, I'm going to get big. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. well, good luck, yeah. tell me how, yeah, because so, I'd yeah. love to know how <laughs> exactly. you do that. Because it took me so long to get, you know, to where I am now, so it's just, nah, it's nonsense. And when did you start competing, or what made you compete? What made me compete? Um, well, I started to look into it when, you know, because of social media, you start having, you're more aware of what's going on. Yeah. And I started seeing these women, women, um, you know, on stage showing off their muscle. I always knew I had good muscle because I would mm. look at myself in the mirror. I've got ex ballerina. You're constantly looking at yourself. So. Mm -hmm, do I good? That's the, yeah, I know. <laughs> that's the way we are. So I, I knew, and I was like, oh, these girls are doing it. Mm, well, I'm not too different. Maybe I should try it, try. and that's that's how it happened. Yeah. So how, I tried how old it. were you when you did your first competition? Like you, I was forty six. You were forty six as well for your first yeah first I competition. Was a, I was, but I didn't. I, basically, competing was the consequences of all my training, which now has changed a lot. A lot of people go, I want to compete. Right? Should I start training? Yeah. Um, no, that was, that was, yeah, that, I did it. Yeah. You should. <laughs> A lot of people just start training. I mean, this is good, you know, it's... it's, it's it just tired. takes you a lot longer, I guess, yeah. if you've been doing it since you were 19. So uh, it, it was pretty much a way of life, I guess, for you. Yeah. The training was a way of life. There was no way, and I've lived in so many different countries and so many different... Because my ex-husband was also an expat, so I lived everywhere. Ah, okay. And it was no way I would enter a country and not find my health club. Right away, I knew where I was going to train the week after, even before the, the doctor or the dentist or the school for the kids. kids. <laughs> you had to know yeah. where the gym was. I had to know where the gym was, yeah. And he had a crash. <laughs> <laughs> so the kids could go in there. Yeah. And I could, yeah, because sometimes they were not schooled yet. Yeah. They were too young. Um, so, yeah, crashes starts at six weeks. I know. They take... They can take your baby. And how, what do your children think about it? They love it. Well, I guess they're grown up. You, and you know, we talked about it before and you said they're, they're pretty much grown up now. Yeah, they, they, they're grown up, but they all work out. They all lift. They all understand. Yeah. Ah. They all know about macros. They all know about, you know, when they're naughty, what they eat is naughty. What well, they don't, you know, they can, they're all lean, all good shape, healthy, non-smokers, not heavy drinkers. Drinkers. No, they're just, they're just normal. Yeah, yeah. they're just the way... Everyone should live their life. Yeah, they have extras sometimes, like I do, you know, I go out and I party and I have a few drinks and I eat naughty food. But it's good to know where the actual 80, track 20 sort of is. Thing. Yes. And you definitely. go back on it. A lot of people don't know where that track is, and that's mm. the problem. They can't go back on anything. So they carry on going oh, like that, and they're lost, and they eat more, and they drink more, and they're like, oh, I don't know where to go, I'm just like this. No, no, no. You need to show them where there's a track so they can go back to it. Do you think it's affected, because um, it's a certain way of life, has it affected your relationships? No, um, not at all. Not at all? No. But, no. So if you're meeting somebody for the, f for the first time, because I know some of the... Do you mean competing? Yeah, competing. So the prepping for yes, competition. The, the, the because prepping. exercising should be everyone's part Absolutely, of life. I mean, no, everyone sorry, should be doing sorry, it. Sorry, the prepping, yes. The prepping. The prepping. Uh, I was always single when I was prepping. Yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't because I was prepping that I was single. I was single anyway. That's the best way to treat that when you're prepping, definitely. Um, mm. The first prep, preparation for my competition, uh, was really... Um, and just so people out there know that, how long do you take to prepare? I mean, you're in great well, shape anyway. How long do you normally... Six weeks, eight weeks. Six, wow, yeah. okay, so that's that's quite short for a lot of people yeah. they take a lot because longer. I know how not to get out of the uh, of shape too much and I know that it's, I'm six weeks six weeks or eight weeks out right. so the minute I decide I look at the date okay let's start now no. yeah um, and what does that prep look like to you you said it was it, do you cut down a lot on your food well you it? do first if you have like a little you know little extras like I love chocolate I love little biscuits with my tea I would put you know, eat yogurt at the wrong time of the day, you know, because all these things are, after that, they're calculated into your, your... So if you clean that up first, doesn't mean you have to lower down your calories, but don't have the odd chocolate biscuits. Um, and, you know, oh, I'm not hungry, I'm not eating. You know, so you start, You've got to start eating, eating regularly. every... Yeah, yeah, regularly. And then uh, weigh your food, which I do anyway. I always weigh yeah. my food. Yeah, I think you get into that. Yeah. I certainly, I still do. Don't um, you think? I've just got into the habit of doing it. Yeah, because don't you think, if you want to stay a certain weight, don't you think it's fantastic to be able to weigh your food, 
you know exactly how much you're putting into your body, you know it's perfect, it's like putting petrol in a car, you can't take any more petrol, the car will run perfectly well, this amount of petrol, you know, it's, you know, with this amount of food and amount of calorie, you'll stay that way. You're going to stay exactly yeah. the way you are. And this yeah. is what you need for your own body. So, mm -hmm. people would think it's a little bit crazy to do that, but I think, you know, I'm comfortable with it. I don't weigh everything, like... Obviously, the biscuits I'm eating, I'm not eating. But at yeah, least when you're off-season, do you do it as I a I still you, weigh, so yeah, 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 still. wear my, my carbs. I know how much carbs I'm having. Yeah. And, and do you think, because um, it's, it's interesting that the off-season and then going into prep, um, that in terms of your body changing, because you do have to put a little, we've just talked about it before, yeah. you have to, and especially for a woman, you do have to put a bit of weight on to gain the muscle. Is that tough? Is that a difficult thing to get your head around? I know you... A lot of people say, no, I love eating. This is great. I can eat whatever I want. I don't have any restrictions. But, um, you know, I've always liked to have some silhouette. Mm. Yeah, you've got a, fan <laughs> a fantastic figure. And, and all your and clothes you're small, a small lady. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't really suit my face they've... neither. I get a bit too... So that can be mm. quite... Diff... I like to have an angular space, space and it's just like, it was all round and all round. <laughs> I was like, ah, I don't like that. Even my mom. In, I went for, to Christmas and I was balking and she went, hmm, I don't know if this is really your best you ever <laughs> looked. <laughs> <laughs> because I was like, really, my, my, yeah, my whole family was going, whoa, you've got big legs, you know. So, yeah, I was getting... Yeah, I don't really like the balking face, okay. but a lot of people would like it. Yeah, and you've it. just recently competed in WBFF. I saw the photos yes, in I November. Did. You looked amazing. I was the eldest one on stage. And at yeah. 53. I had I a 20 just, year old next to me. 53. And yeah. you went open category. Yeah. I mean, the, the, whole, ca the whole category was open. Um, so it was 22 of us on stage. Unfortunately, I didn't place. Um, it was too tough for the category. But You look fantastic, though. I mean, I saw the yeah. photos. I'm, and the I'm happy. You know, I don't really. At my age, I I don't wait for approbation anymore. You know, I I'm 53 years of age. I've, I think it's difficult to, to judge me against who of against course. another 53. There's you, none. Do you find it hard mentally though to get on stage with the 20 something year olds and I just. Obviously, you get a little self-conscious, like, oh, am I out of place? Is, am I going to be, you know, I said to my friends in the fitness industry, and I don't know if they're going to recognize themselves, but I do say to them, promise me I'm not delusional, and you will tell me when it's time to take the gloves off. Promise me you, like, mm, only, we don't really want to see you in a bikini anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, mm, it's not that nice anymore. Can you just put some clothes yeah, on? <laughs> So I said, promise me, no, 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 you can still do it, don't worry. You absolutely it. look fantastic, you're a long way off But that, sure. Yeah, but there will be a stage where we don't want to look anymore at someone a bit older, you know. Yeah, you look great, but you don't have to be in a bikini on heels on stage, yeah. okay. There's a point where you have to go, okay, I think I... And what do you find the hardest part of competing that whole process? Is it the food, the training, the... No, I don't find it hard, no. You don't find any part? No. Because when I went through it, I, and I used to be a runner, and I actually found competing much harder. Because when you run, you can eat whatever you want. There's yeah. no, no one's looking at your body. But I found competing a massive test against will, uh, with willpower. Yeah. And ment I found it much more mentally challenging. I should not say, oh, you know, it's, not, it's easy, but I've done it so many times. But I remember, okay, first, second time. The, the hardest part is to have to constantly be on the schedule to eat. Yeah. I, I have to say, when I'm not competing, I just, I can be a bit more relaxed yeah. about it. But when you know, oh, yeah, my third meal, my fourth meal, oh, I've got my fifth meal, yeah. And you know you have to have all that, nothing counting, else, yeah. and it's just taste. I just remember boring. dreaming of ice cream, and, yeah. and I just, yeah. eat, I used to watch cookery programs, <laughs> yeah. fixated on food. Yeah, a lot of people do that, a yeah. lot of people do that, it's yeah, definitely. yeah. And then all these uh, fake sauces and, and, and desserts and, you know, are, are in the, on the market now, that you can buy a zero-calorie ketchup, yeah. a zero-calorie barbecue Which sauce. Is, Great. Great. When you Great <laughs> now when you're competing, yes. At the time it was I, just jelly, I think, I, I is know, the only thing. I know, that yeah, the jelly, jelly. No, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, um, and have you seen a change in the industry since you started? Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Well, mm. there's more and more when when you get more and more people doing one thing. Obviously, the the, the standards are going to go, uh, you know, a bit low because there's more people doing it. So it's a good thing because it's taken, it's putting a lot of people on the diet. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and they start the gym, and it's a good thing. Um, but I think the uh, competition industry, the federation, they've suffered because of the uh, probably the, the 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 standards are a little bit. It's difficult to find some good standards now because there's too many people on doing it. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. So it's like before you had a certain amount of people that were real athletes doing yes. it, like real. Whoa, you know they, you know, they look, but now there's like a bit of everyone can do it. So and the image has changed. I think I remember when I was doing um, bikini, they softened the look a lot. Oh, you know, and I guess it depends on the federation. Some people are looking at more this curvy, soft look for the yeah. bikini I'm talking about, yeah. and then other federations look at yeah. yeah. Well, now you've got the fitness uh, model federation, and we are sometimes have figure and more bodybuilding also have um, categories with them. And you've got the bodybuilding federations who are very different. Okay, yeah. Either you're bodybuilding, you, yes. you go for the bodybuilding, which mm. is the hard, you know, a little bit more serious about, yeah. about, about it all. And or you've got the fitness modeling, modeling, which gives an opportunity for everyone to go on stage and shine and, and do something for themselves. And I, all my, I've, because I've got this bikini business, so I meet them all, and they all have um, different purposes. Some people would be, um, they're going through a divorce, and um, they've just been through a divorce, and it's been a very tough time, and now it's gonna be me, me, me time. So they decide to compete just to sh kind of shred. They want to shred their skin from the, the old life. Um, I was discussing this with a friend of mine, actually, and he agreed with me, shredding sometimes is to, Move, you know, when you shred. Yes, yes, yes. When exactly. you get really yes. lean, is to to evolve to a different, um, you know, to start over. Yeah, yeah. You're shredding the old, I guess. Yes, you you're shredding the, the old to enter the new. And I, I can see a lot of my clients. Is a lot of them have an issue with something. Could be a divorce. It could be bulimia. It could be anorexia. It could be. And never love, never like themselves. Um, Do you think it attracts that a lot of people with body obsession? You've got to have an, a, a certain amount of obsession, of, because it, it is, you know, when you when you lean down so much and you know you're going to be compared with 10, 15 other people on the stage, you've got to be scrutinizing uh, all your areas to see where you need to work on and why you need to work on it and. You have to be a little bit obsessed, yes. And I mean, I'm, I've always been obsessed with my body, but I think it it, t it almost takes that to also push yourself mm. to go to that level as well. Yeah. Because if you're not that interested anyway, you're, you're not going to ever take your body to that place that it needs to get to. There's something is interesting is I found that um, in the fitness industry, most people are very insecure, mm. and I found more secure people outside of the fitness industry. Yes, completely. And I, it is because there's a problem. Um, body obsession is one thing, but it's not going to give you the security that you need within yourself. It's by accomplishing a, 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 a hobby or having great exchange changes with people, or you know, a, a, you know, having a great job or having some nights out with friends. That is what is going to sort of fulfill you. But to keep on looking at yourself in the mirror, you know, am I big? My size is big enough, or do I get? You know, is my bum good, or my shoulders in symmetrical to my? It's never, it's never going to give you no, security. Not at all. Never, not at all. never in life. And this is this is the problem with the fitness industry. There. And, and I found that there was, um, especially when you you start competing and you've got to take all the Instagram photos, and it's, mm. and then you start looking at other people on Instagram. You start comparing yourself against them, and it can become quite soul destroying. But like you yeah. say, unless you're and confident also, within. And also, yeah, I mean, also, you see it so many times. The girls pushing so far. And going too far with it, and and moving on to, uh, you know, developing more muscles, and and every year is bigger, and I want to be better. What do um, you view on steroids? Have you ever taken steroids? No, I haven't. Um, do you see a lot of it in the? 
you see it on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. You just look you at someone you know. Yeah, yeah. And because a lot of the federations aren't tested, it's... I, oh, I yeah. Think it's... And also the shortcut. A lot of girls yeah. are like, oh, my gosh, I want to look like her. I'm not going to look like her. Well, this is well, you know. And the coaches also want to have the recognition of being good coaches. And sometimes they push a little bit to you know, to, to, to their clients to, to get on it. So they, they get results well, because yeah. obviously that's how they, they can promote their business. Look yeah. at her, look at her before yeah. and after. Ah, one year of training with me. Yeah, but you forget to say that, you know, she's taken some help that, you know, each to their own, they do whatever they want. Um, but it's a shame to see that, you know, a lot of girls are taking some shortcuts when mm. it's all about, because it, you know, the, the journey to get there, why getting there so quickly? Everyone was a quick, quick yes. fix. No, no, let's do it quick, it, yeah. let's do it quick, let's, you know. It's about the journey as yeah. well, you've got to enjoy the journey. Yeah, and I wish, you know, sometimes, um, I made a point to say to myself, I'm happy. I'm happy the way I look. I don't want to do, I'm just going to maintain. I, can anyone in the fitness industry get to that point? Any girls, any man can say to themselves, they look at themselves in the mirror, you know what, that's good enough. There's other thing in life to just carry on and get bigger and, and get fat, yeah. you know, and cool, go for the next competition. You've got to, you've got to be happy. So why doing all this work for so long and all these restrictions and all this, and just keep on looking in the mirror and go, oh, still not good enough. Yeah, you just got to go out and enjoy it yeah, sometimes as well. Yeah. Enjoy all your hard work. Yeah. Have, put some nice clothes <laughs> out and, <laughs> and go and have a drink or eat oh, or have yeah. a social. I know. I, I mean, they, you know, we all do, but it's just a sense. Have, you know, be happy. Be yeah. happy with what you've got. And, and just, you anyway much better than probably 99.9% .9 of people walking around the, the, the city anyway, so you should be happy. Yeah. It's difficult, uh, yeah, it's difficult to use a lot. I find, I find people find it really difficult to be satisfied mm. with what they've got. Yeah, and it becomes more of an obsession. Exactly. Mm. Tell me about your coach, because I know um, oh, I, yes. I, I've had a PT, for I had different PTs all, all through for a long time. Um, and I do believe for me, it's, it's about the trainer as well and your relationship with the trainer. And I know you've got a great relationship with it's Mark, Mark Palfrey. Mark Palfrey, um, we've been training, he's been training me for five years and I wow. would not go anywhere else. He's just the right coach for me. He's very, he's, he's got a lot of knowledge. Um, he's been doing this for a long time. He's just a tiny bit younger than me, not much. Um, and then he, um, he just researched all the time, he's always doing his virtual, so he goes to, to, to classes, courses, uh, he knows a lot about, um, you know, about training and his sessions are absolutely amazing. I never left a session in five years thinking, hmm, that wasn't a good one, yeah. never. Wow. He's always pushing me and he knows me so well now, so it's just a, and it becomes a relationship, pleasure. right? Do you have a good a, a relationship that you get with your Yeah, your well, trainer? I think we're friends, yeah, so you course, can yeah. feel the vibes. Like yeah. This morning, uh, obviously, I had a little cry because of my daughter left um, last night at the gap year, and he just gave me, you know, he was like, he, he responds really well, he's very sensitive, and um, he, you know, he just needed, he knew I wanted a good, a good session, so he made me do like some really good, good exercises because, you know, Get your mind off it. And How often do you train? With uh, I train four or five times a week. Four or five times o on but, uh, off season as well as yeah yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. Four or five times. I do a lot of cardio, a little bit of cardio, I mean not a lot, but I do cardio early in the morning. Tell me about your business because you, how, when did you start this? And okay, so my business started the minute I started competing. Basically, I competed for the WBFF. Um, I realized there was nothing on stage I wanted to wear. I was trying to get someone to make me the bikini. She didn't understand what I wanted because I had something really specific in mind. So I went, oh, two weeks out. I still have a, didn't have oh a gosh, bikini. because two weeks, oh my God. Yeah, the, the, the lady didn't understand the thing I, was, I wanted. So that's it. So I picked up a bra, double padded. I added some embellishment, some fabric on it. I added some lace. I was sewing everything at the time. So, yeah, no, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> I glue for sewing. So I sewed all the lace on it. Uh, I bought a bottom, um, you know, like a swimming costume bottoms. I altered it completely to make it as small as possible. I covered it as well with all the embellishment, put it on, did the WBFF, and everyone went, 
wow, where did you get that yeah. from? And we're like, oh, it's not that good. You should see the inside. <laughs> you should sit there. And they went, no, but how did you get it? You know, it's like, oh, you, can you make me one? So then I, I had an umbilical hernia. So for six weeks, I was out because oh I God, had to. That sounds to, awful. I had surgery. I had a mesh put in. So for six weeks, I was basically at home bored. So I went, oh, let's do some crafts. So I started to do sp bikini tops. And I was posting them on Facebook and I was getting a lot of likes and blah, blah, blah. And I went, oh, this is going really well. So I decided to start a collection. And then I went, okay, I think maybe I need to start a business because I was getting people wanting some and asking me if they can order some. And I wasn't planning on it. And then that's how I started. I employed people. I had four people working for me. Wow, that's amazing. That's within great. six months. Um, yeah, so it was, yeah. And I've learned the whole thing. Um, uh, by myself, but, I mean, no it, one could teach it's, me. It's a, but it's a very challenging industry. I mean, I used to, um, I used to be, or we used to, I used to have a brand, and actually, it's still going for gym wear, for leggings and tops. But the fashion industry was so it's so difficult because you you know it's it's all about stocks and getting the right margins, getting the right quantities, as well as all the marketing. I don't I have that problem. It. You don't find that okay? No, because it's bespoke. It's bespoke, yes. People buy, so, buy it, buy. give me 50%, I start making it. When it's finished, they give me the rest. And if they don't pay me, they don't have a bikini to go on stage And I with. remember you <laughs> made my first bikini and it was absolutely beautiful. Uh, and wow. I remember the actual, the customer journey was lovely as well. And just oh, that from you. the very start um, right through to the end was, yeah, such a, such a lovely journey to have. I think it's because I know what you're going through because I was and I'm still there. I know, I understand how important it is. It's like a wedding dress. It's like you're going to reveal yourself on yeah, stage. Scare. And especially and if you've done it for the first time, it's quite a scary. It, and it's going to be hammer. Your yeah. armor for, for, for the stage is going to be your protection. It's going to be what, you know, it's like, okay, maybe my body's not good enough, but look at this bikini. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And how, have, I mean, how have you managed? Because it's quite it's challenging to run your business. You've got three children. It was difficult. It was very difficult. My kids were very resentful. Very, very, giving me such a hard time. It was so hard. Because I, I was working around the clock and... They were small, still small, six years ago. I still had a 12-year-old at home um, who needed me. And, yeah, you know, homework and stuff. Yeah. And I was doing bikinis like around the clock. And my whole house was taken over. I had to uh, allocate two rooms. One of them was their little sanctuary. And I had to say, sorry, kids, the study where they had the TV, uh, sofa, computer, it was their little room. So I've got to convert this room into, into, for my business, so I had to convert it. Oh my gosh, they hated me. And then I had to convert another room, so I've got two rooms. But um, th yeah, it was very, very difficult. What do you think you owe your strength to? Because to, to uh, do that is... To a lot of problems I've been through uh, at a younger age. In, uh, yeah, I've been through quite a lot. Um, <laughs> Anything you want to talk about, Miracle or you can talk me. about? <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I, I've been through a lot. Um, <laughs> uh, well, twice I had we had to start again, basically from nothing, because first first time was the, our house burned down. Oh wow! Um, and okay. we left. We were alive, basically. Yeah, but we, exactly. we left but you're, you're, in, you're, left yeah. in the ninety. It was that's it. I watched it burn because it was inaccessible for the uh, fire, fire um, brigade. Um, and the second time, um, we lost um, our house in Beverly Hills with uh, all our belongings and furniture and everything you can think of when I was pregnant with my last one because of the bad business move. Um, yeah. I won't go into details, but we were basically homeless, basically not a roof above my head if my parents would not have been there. So it was a very difficult time. So living off a suitcase where I gathered, you know, a couple yeah. of clothes yes. and everything, it was very difficult. So that lasted a couple of years, two and a half years. So when you've been to the bottom of things and you've had nothing and you just, and you still have to raise your kids and hope and put them in school and put them food on the, on the table and doing anything, any little jobs you can just to put food on the table. Um, 
This is nice. You, you, give <laughs> you appreciate a, yourself. Would you say you're, what's going on? It sounds yeah. like you're a very resilient lady. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it takes that, I think, that but, you're picking yourself up each time. But I think everyone would. You know, if you are given, if you have it a bit of sense in yourself, you just don't let yourself go. You, you know, anybody would fight, I think. I think you've got the fighter in you. Yes. I, I, I honestly, I, I, I wouldn't put yourself down, I think. To bring to raise three kids. Um, oh, I've to, had a, to, I, to, I have a, a husband at the time as well. Yeah. I mean, he was not he was not here, but at the time, yeah, I was on my own with him. But yes, but but even to compete to get to the level that you've got to to go through, I, I, I think there's a, a mental strength there. Um, not not just the body strong, but it, it must be a, a mental strength as well. Yeah, I do have my cries sometimes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> No, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's, and also, you know, sometimes you know, because I'm a sing, I'm single, yeah. and sometimes you want to cry on someone's. Oh, you course, you know, you, you want to want cry on someone's somebody. shoulder, not do. cry, baby, cry, but just want to say, this happened today, and that was really cross with this mm. person did that, and you can't say it to anyone. You're on your, you're by yourself. I, I sometimes I go, you know, tell my kids, and my kids are like, oh, shut up, mom. Yeah, <laughs> they don't want to hear it. So you're like. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, sometimes you want to share something. It's, when you're single, it's hard because yeah. you know you go through life without having. You can't exp express your your feelings. So yes, you get really strong. Yeah, inside. you get stronger. You, you get, get this really yeah independence. I mm. think. Yeah. What's next for you, Veronique? You've just competed. Are you going to will you compete again? Do you think? I never, every time I compete, I finish the competition and I never, never plan. I'm just, you know, go. I'm, I like to go with the flow of things. So if there's an opportunity there I'll, and it's pleasing me and it's, um, you know, it's bringing some happiness in my life, I'll go for it. You know, I'm not, I don't really go, this, I kind of, I'm opportunistic. I like to look what's opened and, you know, and I take what's, what's, what's there. Yeah, what's there, really. So what's next? I don't know. Surprise. Yeah. That's what I love about life. life. You don't know. Yeah. But the business is still, you're still great with yeah. the business. And yeah. I guess with the more competitive uh, people that are competing now, I guess you've got... I still have the passion for it. The minute yeah. I'm bored and I, I'm sitting down doing bikinis, I'm like, I can't do that anymore. I'll stop and do something I else. I know where to go for my next bikini. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to compete again, um, Sonia? Do you know what? I'd like to do it. I don't know when, but I've always thought I'd, I'd definitely like to do it a third time. It's just it's just one of those things. I did it twice, but I really, I'd, I'd like to, do, yeah, I, I placed fifth the last time, but I'd like to get in the top three. That's my aim. I don't know when, um, but yes, I will compete one more, at least one more time. Yes. Definitely, I'd I like mean, to. I mean, if it makes you happy, you want to do it. You meet a lot of great yeah. friends. It's a great day. Something, you know, it's a challenge. Yeah. It makes you stronger. Makes and, you I, and I still train like you do. I train five times a week. Yeah. So I'm still as yeah. though, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. One day, yeah, that's never going to change. No, no. no. And Veronique, for my last question, <laughs> and I ask all my guests this, um, if you were to write a message in a bottle for future generations to find, what would that message be? Never give up. Wow. Veronique, thank you so much for being a guest on my show. It's been lovely. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the show. Remember, there's a new interview out every Monday. So hit subscribe and like and you'll get it straight into your inbox. Thank you.